ESPN is proud to present this commercial free telecast of Sports Figure, supporting education for America's youth. The following program is part of Cable in the Classroom, a free service of the cable communications industry and your local cable company. Hi, I'm Chris McKendry. Welcome to ESPN Sports Figures, the only place on television where you'll hear pro tennis player Chanda Rubin say, The flexing of the frame actually steals power from the ball instead of giving it. ESPN Sports Figures, where sports and science go one on one. Let's join Greg Abbey with Chanda Rubin. Hey, Chanda, you want to win this match? Of course I do. Okay, then I want you to try this new racket here. I designed it myself. I can't play with this. The strings are rubber bands. Oh, shush, shush, shush. That's the secret. I mean, you're going to get power out of this baby like you won't believe. Trust me. Why should I trust you? Because I'm the physics guy from TV. I, I figured the whole thing out. It's all physics. Oh, right. I've seen your show. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, everyone is going to want to play with one of these babies after they see you. Believe me. OK, well, you should know. Well, Mr. Physics. Hmm. I must have forgot to carry the two. Sports figures, put your brain in the game. Tennis players are always looking for ways to get more power out of the rack. Should the strings be tight or loose? Does the frame of the racket actually give you more power? Where's the power spot on the racket? What do we mean by power? Good questions. There's actually a lot going on when ball meets racket. Behind me here is Chanda Rubin. She was ranked as high as number six in the world. She's uh, won numerous events, including the Grand Slam title for women's doubles at the Australian Open. She knows a thing or two about power, and she knows a little something about physics. So Chanda, what kind of things are happening when the ball hits the strings of the racket? Well, a tennis ball is pretty soft, so it's going to flatten out. OK. Most balls are elastic, so they flatten out a little bit on impact. The ball pushes back out to round, and it bounces. OK, what else is happening? When the ball hits the strings, the strings give with the impact. Let's say I'm a tennis ball, and this trampoline is a racket. The strings of a racket distort just like the trampoline does when I hit. OK, what else is happening? Well, the frame of the racket, it's going to bend, too. OK. The impact of the ball will deflect the entire frame of the racket. Then it will snap back, just like the ball and the strings. So what do we mean by power? Well, if something's moving, it has kinetic energy. And the faster it goes, the greater the kinetic energy. So we want to get the ball moving oh, really fast. When a ball and a racket collide, the ball, the strings, and the frame are all deforming. Now, what do all these things have in common? They're, They're all springs. 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 OK, cool. Springs are pretty common, right? Springs are around us every day. A spring can store energy. There's a spring inside this car, and I'm tightening it as I wind it. Now, you might not think of it this way, but a spring is an energy storage device. All the energy I'm using to stretch these elastic bands is being stored inside them. When you distort a spring, it saves up the energy used to distort it and then gives it back as soon as it gets the chance. The important thing is, it takes energy uh, to distort it. Yeah. See? There goes my energy. Energy is a pretty cool thing. Now, we know that when something's moving, it has energy, kinetic energy. 
And we know that kinetic energy can be transferred, like from the ball to the pins. But there are other kinds of energy. If I pick up this bowling ball, I've used some energy to pick it up. And I've also given the ball energy. This ball has gravitational potential energy. Oh, oh, ah, energy. Ow. When Brandy stretches these elastic bands, she's giving them potential energy. But it's not gravitational, right? It must be some other kind. It's like spring potential or elastic. Right. We call a spring's potential energy elastic potential energy. An elastic energy storage device. A trampoline is a very cool energy transference device. Kinetic energy, gravitational potential energy, elastic potential energy. An energy loop. But you don't want the frame of the racket to bend. Right, how come? The flexing of the frame actually steals power from the ball instead of giving it. No way. Way, the same for the ball. It steals energy as well. She's right, you know. OK, Chester, do you remember what we said? It takes energy to distort a spring, right? Right. Now, when the tennis ball hits the racket, it does use up some of its kinetic energy to bend the racket frame and give the frame elastic potential energy. But the uh, ball is only in contact with the strings for a very short time, like five milliseconds, five one thousandths of a second. Now, here's the problem. It takes a racket 15 to 20 milliseconds to rebound. The ball is long gone. It doesn't get any of that elastic potential energy. It wasted kinetic energy flexing the racket and didn't get any of it back. Brackets are made as stiff as possible so that they absorb as little of the kinetic energy as possible. What about the new materials they use to make rackets? I thought they switched from wood to give them more spring. Actually, they switch from wood to make the rackets even stiffer and lighter. So you don't get the spring effect on the racket, but what about the ball? It's elastic. Doesn't it return the energy when it bounces off the springs? Well, let's see. A tennis ball has a fuzzy outer skin and a rubber elastic inner layer. Now, when the tennis ball hits something like the ground or a racket, it compresses the air and the elastic rubber inside. They gain elastic potential energy, then give it back, just like the trampoline. And it bounces. Something very curious is happening as a uh, tennis ball goes faster and bounces. Now, we've already clocked the speeds of the ball machine here. What do we got? At the slow setting, the ball's going at 20 miles per hour. OK, let's, uh, let's check the rebound speed of the ball. Kick that on, all right. What do we got? 15 miles per hour. 15, OK. If we just divide 15 by 20, we find that the ball came back at 75% of its original speed. It lost a lot of kinetic energy. OK, let's, uh, let's try it on a faster setting. The fastest setting shoots the ball out at 65 miles per hour. 65, OK. Give it a whirl. Whoa! What do we got? 45 miles per hour. 45, all right. If we divide 45 by 65, the ball only returned with 69% of its original speed. It had 75% of the original velocity before, and now only 69%. It, it lost even more kinetic energy. What happened? The faster a ball goes, the harder it hits, the more it compresses, and the more kinetic energy it loses. <laughs> You know how when you bounce a tennis ball really, really, really hard, and it doesn't actually go as high as you think it would? Well, ugh, the rounder a ball stays in a collision, the less kinetic energy it loses. When the ball hits the racket, the strings distort, just like the trampoline distorts when I hit it. The key is the strings rebound much more quickly than the frame, so they can return some of the kinetic energy absorbed. But should the strings be looser or tighter? It's one of the most important questions in tennis. Now, if the strings were really, really, really tight, they'd have about the same effect as wood. 
Let's let Chanda hit with this, and we'll clock the speed of the ball. Thirty-five miles per hour. Okay, let's uh, try the racket with the looser strings, Chanda. Let's see how this works. Fifty miles per hour. Whoa! Now that's power. Greater speed means greater kinetic energy. Power. So the idea is to let the strings give when they're hit. The ball maintains its shape better, and it loses less energy in the collision. <laughs> this should work. But what if the strings were on the looser side? A measly 25 miles per hour. Now, obviously, there's a point where looseness returns less power. It's probably the point where the strings distort so much that the ball hardly distorts at all. Now, here's something weird. A player like Chanda will actually give up some of that power by playing with tighter strings. How come? Well, I already have the power, but I actually get more control with tighter strings. So a strong player like Chanda wants more control, while for the rest of us, looser is better. Now, here's another question. Where's the power spot on the rack? Well, it's right about here. Uh, what if I told you that that wasn't true? Mm. Yeah, yeah, let's go to the sports figures blackboard. We'll take a look. This is what we used to play tennis with. This is what we play with today. Aside from the obvious difference in the materials in the racket, there's also a difference in the shape of the head of the racket. Most tennis players are used to the sweet spot being right here, in the center of the strings. By changing the shape of the racket, designers found that they could extend the sweet spot down toward the shaft. That puts the true power spot on a modern racket down here. It might seem like you'd lose power here by the shaft, because this part of the racket is actually moving slower than the top part out here. But what you lose in racket speed, you more than make up for in stiffness. The racket is stiffer down by the shaft, so less kinetic energy is wasted in bending the racket, and that saved energy translates to power in your shots. Strange but true, but for power, your sweet spot is right here. I'm Patrick McEnroe for Sports Figures Blackboard. So you professional tennis players, you know all this stuff, right? Of course. I know that a stiffer frame gives me more power, but I balance that out with tighter strings for more control. Plus, it's a lot more fun when you know what's going on. It makes you a smarter player. Aha. Uh -huh. There you go. Game, Game Ruben. Ruben. OK, guys, so what do we learn? that it takes energy to distort a material. And that some materials can store that energy, like a spring. A spring takes kinetic energy and stores it as elastic potential energy. And you don't necessarily get back all of the energy that you put in. Okay, Ruben. So that's it. I'd like to thank uh, Chanda Rubin, our students from Lafayette High School, and Red Laurel for helping us out today on ESPN Sports Figures, The Elastic Rack. You know, this works much better on paper. I'm Chris McKendry, back in the ESPN studios. We'd like to thank all of today's athletes for donating their time, and thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on ESPN Sports Figures. ESPN Sports Figures is presented commercial free for educators to take and use in the classroom. For a free teacher's curriculum, to order the Sports Figures series, or if you have questions or comments, visit our website, sportsfigures.espn.com. You can also call 860-766-2000. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Sports Figures, put your brain in the game. The preceding program is part of Cable in the Classroom, a free service of the cable communications industry and your local cable company. ESPN is proud to present this commercial-free telecast of sports figures, supporting education for America's youth.